Hey y'all, happy Friday. We made it. It is Christmas time up here in the Miller household. So Merry Christmas to those who celebrate, whether that be uh, Jesus's birthday or the more secular version. All good. <laughs> And Merry Christmas to those who celebrate um, and happy holidays to those who celebrate something that is not Christmas. I don't want to leave you all out. And finally, for my beloved job seeking community, friends, family and viewers who don't celebrate anything. Happy Friday. We can all celebrate Friday. <laughs> Unless you work Saturday. Anyway, this is going to go badly. I should stop now and just get on with the topic, shall we? Okay, let's do that. So I want to dig into, you know, now that I've already kind of started by offending at least one person, let's see if I can offend some more. This ought to be good. Um, I want to dig in a little bit to the widely held belief that if I am a job seeker who has applied to a role that I am qualified for and I have made that clear in my resume and I still didn't get an interview, then clearly, clearly, that is proof that there's a bot. Hmm. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna unpack this a little bit because I understand completely, I understand the thought process that gets us there. I do. I too have applied to roles. I've even been referred to roles that I knew I could do in my sleep and I still didn't get an interview. I also understand that the odds are, I may not be able to prove it, but the odds are that someone did eyeball my resume and made a decision. That decision was not in my favor. It happens happens all the time. I see it play out all the time from this side of the desk. So I've experienced it as a job seeker. I've seen it happen as a recruiter. So here's oftentimes how this goes down. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to share, you know, again, kind of high level, anecdotal, this is what Amy Miller has personally done, <laughs> kind of data. Take that with a big fat grain of salt as usual. But I think this is important because I, I want to get job seekers off of this hamster wheel of chasing, uh, you know, expending energy on something that is not going to net you the result you want. That That's really the core of my concern and argument against the whole ATS nonsense. Like people, I, I know people clown on me because I talk about it so much and, you know, I get tagged and stuff and I'm, I know, I know it's a joke to a lot of you and that's okay. You can laugh at me if you want, but knowing that there are people out there who are genuinely struggling with this idea, I'm sorry, I'm not going to stop talking about it because it's important. So I'll be your clown. I don't care. Actually, I'd rather not. I'm actually terrified of clouds. They're really creepy. But anyway, you can make jokes at my expense. Doesn't hurt my feelings. So here's what happens. I can say fairly confidently that everywhere I've worked, particularly companies that are OFCCP compliant, we have a rule, an expectation that all of the incoming applicants are at least given a quick overview, quick review, right? We eyeball them quickly, we make a quick decision, we move on. And that decision has to be based, if we are doing our jobs correctly, that decision has to be based on basic qualifications. So OFCCP compliance, I've talked about that a million times, dictates that we have to have certain criteria that is not negotiable. Applicants who meet that criteria have to be you know, reviewed properly and dispositioned properly. This does not mean that I have to send everybody who meets basic qualifications to the hiring manager. However, it is generally a good practice to do that. If you have a manageable number, if you have, you know, a hundred, I, I get all the time, well, what about, you know, you got a thousand resumes overnight. I, I don't, <laughs> maybe you do. I don't, I don't get that many applicants, but anyway, some, some do, it's fine. Um, 
But even in volume environments, that's where we kind of see things like knockout questions or, uh, you know, maybe we, we pay more attention to the preferred qualifications, those kinds of things. And I definitely know recruiters who do that where they'll say, they'll admit, you know, straight up, yeah, I got a hundred applicants that all fit the criteria and I had to narrow that down. I cannot phone screen a hundred people. So I had to kind of do a second pass review and I narrowed it down to 25 who meet at least two of the six preferred qualifications, for example. Okay, kind of made that number up, but you get where I'm going with this. So I know recruiters who have had to do that. And I also know, and I've been this recruiter, where if they meet the basics, it's an automatic submittal. Like I'm immediately hitting the button in the ATS. The ATS, oh, yeah, I use it how I'm supposed to. Try it sometime. And I submit that resume to the hiring manager. So this can mean that a hiring manager might get 10, 15, 20, 30 resumes a week from me. Uh, you're welcome, <laughs> right? Like we, we want just enough volume that we're getting, you know, we're casting kind of a wide net and we're able to kind of talk to a lot of people. That would be a good thing. But also with the caveat that, you know, yeah, this person meets the criteria that you and I agreed on when we created the role, the basic qualifications. Now, let's say my hiring manager gets 20 qualified applicants, right? Or, or employee referrals or people we've sourced, whatever. It doesn't really matter the source so much. We don't worry about that as much. We are really focusing on these people meet the qualifications, the basic qualifications. It is not unusual for the hiring manager to say, okay, cool. I got 20 people here. And you know what? These five fit everything. Like, they meet most of the preferred qualifications. They're, they're working at a company I know does very similar work. You know, I mean, there's, there's any number of, of inputs that might make candidate A a better fit than candidate B. This doesn't mean candidate B did not get reviewed by two people, the recruiter and the hiring manager. So candidate B, unfortunately, may not get selected in the first round because we also had candidate A, C, and D who fit the role better. They, they had more of the preferred qualifications. So, you know, there's, again, I try to keep this like very factual and very like based on specific objective criteria. I do not want to hire on personality. I do not want to hire because, you know, some other insert your bias here. I don't want to allow that to happen. So I want to keep us very, very grounded in this is the, the kind of talent. These are this, the set of experiences, the set of skills the proven expertise that we need to solve this problem, I wanna focus on that. And that sometimes comes with a second layer of filtering, which means that yes, unfortunately, qualified applicants sometimes don't get invited to interview. I'm not suggesting you shouldn't apply to roles where you don't meet the preferred qualifications. The preferred qualifications, that's what's under the tree. That's the wish list, okay? We rarely are going to find someone that fits everything. That is a purple unicorn. We know that, we're not gonna get it. It sure would be nice, but again, we're not expecting perfection. We don't let perfect be the enemy of good. But sometimes we have to filter and look at, you know, kind of that next layer of review and say, out of this group of 20, I know I really can only interview five or six, I'm gonna choose these five or six. And then we see those interview processes through and hopefully we end up hiring one of them, okay? So what does that mean for candidate B who got basically you know, put on hold at the secondary review stage? We might come back if one of the other interviewers or other candidates didn't end up working out for some reason we might call that person for a new role. You know, hey, we've got a similar position that's maybe a higher level or a lower level or a different level or whatever. So we always wanna revisit our, our existing applicants and especially our active applicants because we know they're interested in talking to us. 
But what it doesn't do, y'all, and this is the point that I really want to drive home, what it doesn't do is prove the existence of bots or prove that no one looked at your resume. To the contrary, it is often multiple people looking at your resume before that final disposition decision was made. I wish we lived in a world where I could personally call every single one of you and explain in great detail the process that we went through to make the decision to call you or not call you. I wish that we could. There are many reasons why we can't. I won't go into all of them here because I'm already over time, but I would just encourage you as always, leverage every tool you have. Yes, apply to roles that you fit all of the basic qualifications and as many as the, of the preferred as you can. Yes, reach out to your trusted network, talk to your friends, families, colleagues, ex coworkers, anyone you can at companies that you wanna work for and see if you can learn how to better optimize yourself as a candidate for their open roles, maybe even snag a referral. And yes, make connections with recruiters who work in your industry. They have a line of sight into roles that you may otherwise not find. It doesn't mean they're not hidden for God's sakes. Don't get me started on that. But they're going to be able to help you put your best foot forward. They're going to be able to explain to you how to prepare for interviews, how to write your resume to suit the audience, all of those things that mystify so many job seekers and really was the reason that this channel came into existence. That is my Christmas gift to you, my friends. I want you to watch these videos. I want you to take advantage of the templates and the FAQs and all the things that I've created for you on the website, recruitinginyogapants.com. And I want you to go get your dream job and never have to come back. I'm not here for lifelong subscribers. I'm here to help you during a season of your life, much like Christmas season, for you, it might be job search season. And I just want to help empower you to do that more strategically. So from the Miller household, merriest of Christmases, happiest of holidays, happiest of Fridays. I hope that the new year brings you the dream job that you're looking for. We'll see you next week.